play some games. Hold on. All right, you ready now? What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are moving right along with our door build here and we've got all the parts and pieces ready for the glue up. We had a little bit of prep work to do on the parts and pieces, especially around the coves that we installed in the last video. I just took a little block plane and just plane those down to be even with the surface of the door. And the reason we had that little overhang is because really this door should have been probably two inches. I made it inch and three quarter, but to use these deep profiles for the mutton bars, it needed to be a little bit thicker. So we're kind of pushing it to the limit with the profiles of these cove moldings as far as depth goes. So once we had that ready, we got all the pieces in their place and then we decided that we were gonna do this glue up really in two different glue ups. And the first one would consist of the bottom section of the door, which would be the mid rail, mid style and bottom rail and the two panels. Now the two panels are not going to be glued. They're just gonna be free floating panels so they can expand and contract as the moisture changes. So we wanted those in place though, because we wanted to make sure everything was checking out. So we went ahead and slid those in place did our glue up, we had to turn my two cabinet clamps into one clamp by connecting them. And that allowed us to get the full span to compress the mortise and tenons for those pieces. So once we got that done, it was time to glue up the other pieces, which would have been the top rail and two side styles. So we just glued up everything, put glue in the mortises, glue all over the tenons. Once we got that, we made sure everything was good, checking out and square. So we went ahead and threw our clamps on those joints, put some compression on them, and that was really all there was to it. I made sure everything was square, kind of checked everything out, made sure it wasn't bowing or tweaking with the clamps, like one clamp was lifting up one rail or style more than the other. So once everything checked out, we had a glued up door, which we have right over here. We're about to take it out of the clamps. This has been glued up in these clamps like this for 21 hours and 17 minutes. Like I mentioned, we checked it for square. This thing's square, it's flat, it's good to go. We've got proper compression on all of our joints. We had proper squeeze out on all of our joints so we know we used enough glue. And you can see that glue right there, obviously after 21 hours is already rock hard and cured. So. Yeah, this is gonna be a really good solid door. So at this point, we need to take it out of the clamps and get to kind of finishing the surface. So we'll take these clamps off and then sand it all down. Dang, this sucker is heavy. This ain't gonna work. And just, oh, this ain't too bad. Let me see this thing. Dude, I gotta see it in place. Now that it's put together. Oh, it's too short. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. It's because that weather strip. I am going to keep the same jam and opening. I'm not going to replace that on this door. Check it out. I want to step back and look at this thing in its place. I got to say that right there makes me happy. And that is one of the reasons, you know, I get some comments from people who are like, why are you doing all that stuff to the garage, like the shop? One of the reasons is I'm trying to make an environment that makes me happy and seeing like architectural details like this and knowing that we put them together, that this is not just me, this is me and John doing this. You know, we put this together you know, our ideas come together to make this stuff happen. It's just a really fulfilling feeling rather than just seeing the door that's behind that one. So it's more of like an inspiration thing where you walk into a space and you're like, wow, I, this, there's some cool stuff in here. I want to make something cool. And really just some quirky finishes and features is really what I'm after. And I think what's happening, we've been in thousands of houses over the last decade of doing this, literally thousands of houses and they're so polished off and consistent that I'm kind of making this space in my house a rejection of that. So, uh, and I'm not against polished off consistent stuff. I've just seen it so much. I wanna do something a little more funky. Like this finish right here, this Makita Blue Lagoon Rust-Oleum with the distressing. And then this one right here, you know, I did consider painting it but we are actually going to take a page out of Samurai Carpenter's book and use this Odie's oil. Now, he's sponsored by them, I'm not. I just watch his videos and I know he finishes like his whole off-grid cabin with this stuff. 
And I was like, that actually looks pretty cool. And this stuff is like the best for like exterior stuff. It has like natural plant waxes and stuff in it. And what's cool about this, again, this is not an advertisement for them. I've never spoken with this company. But what's cool about that stuff is say you get some, you know, weather wear from like sunlight and just the elements outside, you can just refinish it straight on top of the previous finish. You don't have to like sand it all off and refinish it in that sense. So yeah, I think it's gonna make all those different pieces pop, the mahogany, the Spanish cedar, there's gonna be contrast and it's gonna be super cool. Check it out guys, we have the door all done with glue up, all sanded and ready to move on to the next step in this process, which is the mutton bars. Now, if you watched the last video, we already made the mutton bars. I showed how we routed those out and did that custom molding. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool because we're gonna cope those out with a router bit, with a roundover bit, and they're gonna be able to fit perpendicular to these moldings that we already have in here. So we'll have one going up right here and one going up right here that'll divide this up into three different pieces of glass. These are ready to get coped out and measured and cut to size. So here's the thing we just learned about these, which hindsight's always 2020, and I know what to do next time. But here's the mistake we kind of made on these. We milled these pieces thinking we would just cope them out later, but We've been trying this for a little bit off camera and it's very difficult to achieve this cut. So mahogany, right? It's a hardwood, very tight grain. This molding is a very, very small piece. And not only is mahogany a tight grain, but the place we're trying to make this cope cut out of is an end grain. So you add all those things together and you get a really difficult cut to achieve. So we, we have to run this across our cove bits in there right now. We have to run this across like this. Obviously, that's not gonna work. There's gonna be operator error there. So we've got this offcut that's square of mahogany that we're trying to push it through like that. Still, it's just the piece is too odd. You know, it's on this little foundation here, this little stump, I guess, if you will, and it wants to roll around. So here's what we have to do to accomplish this. It's actually really not that difficult. It just adds more steps to the process. So we're gonna have to take this piece, cut a 45, a 45 on each side of it, right at the tip of that molding. Then we're gonna take it to the table saw. We've already got this set up. We'll pass it with the sliding table saw and then I'll kind of plane it out. And then once we got that, that material is taken out of there. Then I can come up to this, this roundover bit right here, and then slowly push into it. So that's what we're gonna to have to do. It adds like two more steps that are needed and it's, it's just a hassle. But looking back, what we should have done, we should have taken like a big, you know, thick stock of this mahogany, like this one. And then, before we milled all that out, we should have made this profile cut first because we're having problems with the tear out on such a thin piece like this. So if we did it out of a big stock like this, pushed it across, you know, took our time, everything like that, then with that profile already coped out on there, then we could have ripped these out of it. That would have been the smart way to do it. There's our cove cut right there. You can see it's a pretty clean cut. And what we'll do is we'll take a piece of the cove molding that we made. It's the exact same profile on the inside of our opening there. And we'll see if it matches up. And that is a pretty good matchup right there. So this is gonna take a little bit of filing work just to close up that tiny gap right there and just to get this to hug a little bit tighter. But you can see, you can see the idea now. You've got basically this horizontal piece right here. And when this drops in, it's allowing it to intersect and you're not losing your profile. 
So essentially we need to drop this in right here. It's going to be a little weird. We'll actually just have to measure this. But we drop this in right here and up there measuring from this edge of this profile to the top edge of that profile. And if we do that, I mean, we just got to repeat this same process right here. All right, so we got our first back-to-back -back cope out and you can see there's a little bit of chisel work and filing. That's to be expected, but now is the moment of truth. We're gonna pop this thing in there and I'm hoping it fits. I have enough for like one mistake, but if not, we're gonna have to make more of this, which isn't really too big of a deal, but it'd be better if we could just get it. So I'm just gonna drop this in sideways. <laughs> that is freaking amazing. That is just so cool. It's a, there's a little tiny bit of stuff that needs to get done, like I just mentioned. But I mean, for first time, like this probably could get planed down to, to be planed with that. This was all sanded with the, uh, the orbital, so it knocked it down because we had this all flush. So we could either plane this with the, uh, just a block plane or maybe even run the, the sander over it just to kind of level it off because there is a bit of a lip there. But overall, I mean that, I mean it, I'm not holding it anymore either, so it's not exactly straight either. So yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet right there for first try. So we'll clean these up a little bit. I'll make the other one, you know, we'll file them down and stuff to get them to fit in there good. And then we'll figure out exactly where we want to install them. Check it out guys, we got two of them. So we're gonna go ahead and pop these things in. So this process, I'm only gonna show you guys on this side. The back side, after we put the glass in, we'll sandwich it with the other ones. It's gonna be the exact same thing. We're gonna have to dial. And my microphone died right here and I didn't realize it until I was editing this video. But basically I just installed those two mutton bars the same way I did that one earlier and everything checked out nice and tight. And once I got them in, I realized this reminded me of my time in the penitentiary with my arms hanging out of the bars. I did a small stint in the penitentiary, state penitentiary, not federal, for being caught with a substantial amount of MDF and polystyrene products, but as I was waiting for my trial, the judge commuted my sentence to time served and gave me a couple months of probation, so I was fortunate in that. I was rambling on about something like that and um, just talking about how on the next episode of this door build, we we're gonna go get some historic wavy glass and try cutting glass for the first time and install it. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next video.